2016 election. Hillary Clinton's latest book, What Happened comes out next week, and the former candidate is blaming everyone around her for her 2016 loss. She's not even shy about playing the blame game. You can blame the data, blame the message, blame anything you want, Clinton says. Those were my decisions, she adds, but they weren't her fault. Here are a few people she blames in her new book, Matt Lauer. Matt Lauer is an odd person for Clinton to attack, but Clinton apparently took objection to Lauer questioning the candidate on her illegal email setup. Lauer had turned what should have been a serious discussion into a pointless ambush, Clinton wrote of the interview. Apparently, Clinton would rather the press not bring up the fact that she was under FBI investigation. She may have been the most media-supported candidate in modern history, but they still didn't do enough. She wanted them to ignore her scandals altogether. Speaking of the FBI, James Comey, Clinton didn't like the fact that Comey had the audacity to reopen the FBI investigation once he discovered new evidence the campaign refused to turn over to authorities. My first instinct was that my campaign should hit back and explain that James Comey had badly overstepped his bounds, Clinton says. Looking back, that was a mistake. Maybe she shouldn't have broken the law. Bernie Sanders, Clinton believes Bernie Sanders put her in a straight jacket because her allies told her not to attack him or his supporters. In an excerpt from her book posted to Twitter, Clinton claims Sanders supporters weren't willing to listen to her, even though he was pursuing a pipe dream. This stopped her from being seen as a true progressive and was one of the reasons she lost, she argues. Sexists, this last quote from her book might be the most absurd. Despite the massive amounts of blame she assigns to everyone around her, she also manages to make her failings about her sex. What makes me such a lightning rod for fury? I'm really asking. I'm at a loss, she writes. I think it's partly because I'm a woman. No, Hillary, it's not because you're a woman. But since you're really asking, I suppose you deserve an answer, you're a lightning rod for criticism because you're unlikable, lawless and elitist. You look down on everybody yet blame them all for your own shortcomings. You think the world owes you everything. Thankfully, the voters gave you nothing. Sheriff you think Hillary Clinton needs to get over it and accept that she is the reason she lost. Sources, Daily Mail, in White Times, see. First Lady Showdown Melania was just insulted in the worst way ever. Yeah well, I'm a little bit tired of our first lady constantly getting picked on by the press. If it's not one thing, it's another, and this time Vanity Fair really took home the cake, reports Fox News. Vanity Fair released its annual International Best Dressed List, a compilation of dozens of high-profile, well-dressed people. Now get this Melania Trump, known for her excellent taste and flattering apparel both at home and abroad didn't make the cut. This wouldn't seem like such a big deal if the likes of Michelle and Barack Obama, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and French President Emmanuel Macron and his wife Bridget, weren't also all on the list. Now why would those prominent leftist politicians be put on this iconic fashion list but now Melania? As many users on Twitter speculated it's politics, plain and simple, Melania has managed to represent us with grace, class and great taste all over the world and here at home. It's just too bad the mainstream media continues to snub the president and first lady. Oh well. Check out some of Melania's awesome looks just from the inauguration, do you think Melania is really the best dressed? Share it out so she can see it herself, patriots. H slash T Fox News. Equifax hacking scandal gets weirder. Credit reporting service Equifax has been under intense scrutiny in the aftermath of its revelation that their security systems had been breached. The cyber attack occurred on July 29 but it wasn't announced until Thursday. The attack compromised more than 143 million customers in their private information. In an era where many corporations have been victims of hacking, Equifax is under fire not for allowing the breach but how the company has handled it. Three company executives including CFO John Gamble sold stocks in the company three days after the breach happened. 
The executives, who claim to have not received information of the breach at the time they sold the stock, made a combined total of $1.8 million. What's worse is that it took over a month for them to go public with the information, preventing millions of people from securing their identity from theft and fraud. Equifax said in its formal statement that hackers accessed social security numbers, names, birth dates, addresses and in addition to the credit billing information of its customers. If it turns out that the executives who sold their stock had knowledge of the breach they could be charged with felonies for engaging in illegal stock practices. Equifax shares tumbled 13% in the hours after their announcement meaning the executives gamble. Joseph Flowren and Rodolfo Ploder avoided losses in the transaction. Equifax is doing its best to remedy the situation but even that effort has fell short. The company created a website to allow its customers to find out if they were affected by the hack but it doesn't offer much assistance. Not only does the new page require that you give Equifax more of your personal information but it shows a basic thank you screen at the end which means it's simply a customer service inquiry form. CEO of Equifax Rick Smith released a video where he formally read a statement from a teleprompter which seemed to rub some people the wrong way. You can see the statement here. Stealth Trump just permanently made America great again while media was looking the other way. Trump is one smart man and he's taking full advantage of the fact that the media and his other detractors assume he's an idiot. While they continue to focus on Russia, fuel division by inciting Antifa violence and try to say he isn't helping hurricane victims, which is totally ridiculous, he is quietly and with efficient laser focus, changing the country to ensure his promise to make America great again. He is doing this by redesigning the federal courts. For instance, the Ninth Circuit Court has continually stamped down Trump's travel ban, his plan to keep our country safe from terrorists. Courtesy of Fox News, via YouTube.com, Trump is working to change that, though. He just named more judges to sit on the federal appeals courts, where, for example, there are now four vacancies on the Ninth Circuit. He has named Ryan Bounds to that court, a federal prosecutor with great credentials, who served in the Bush administration. He also just named Gregory Katzis to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit. Mr. Katzis currently serves as Deputy White House Counsel. In Trump's White House, of course. He, too, has a stellar reputation. I can't emphasize enough how important what Trump is doing in U.S. courts while no one is paying attention is. Our courts have more power over our lives than most people realize on a day-to-day -day basis. They shape the laws under which we live every single day. As an attorney. I am keenly aware of how important our judges' personal political views are on cases, no matter how objective they may try to be. If you are happy about Trump's performance as a president, please get this shared and comment way to go Trump. H slash T The Daily Call SHE's cooked W. Wasserman Schultz will be spending time in jail after what prosecutors just did. LW has continued to follow the investigation into W. Wasserman Schultz and the IT scandal. Sadly, the MSM has not, which proves exactly what they are all about. This is shady as heck, you'll. Something you might see in a movie. Recent actions by prosecutors in the criminal case against Wasserman Schultz IT guy suggests that they may bring other charges in the cybersecurity and theft investigation. In fact, the Daily Caller reports that prosecutors are eyeing Wasserman Schultz herself in the laptop probe. Just watch this. Courtesy of Breaking News Global 24-7 via YouTube.com, she frantically tried to keep police from looking at her laptop as part of their investigation. She actually threatened Capitol Police if they didn't return it to her. She first claimed the laptop was hers, later claimed that it was Imran Awans and she'd never seen it. Then it was revealed that the laptop had username Rep DWS. Here's the movie part, Imran left this laptop in a phone booth. I mean, who uses phone booths anymore? That's right, investigators were rightfully suspicious, especially because, together with the laptop were copies of his ID, a notebook that said attorney-client privilege and letters to the U.S. attorney. 
seen any of this on the MSM, you I know I haven't. More and more shadiness, indeed. Prosecutors just gave copies of the laptop's hard drive to Imran's attorney in discovery. Imran has thus far only been charged with bank fraud but their recent actions suggest they may be about to bring charges in their cybersecurity and theft investigation. Imran had access to Tahoe's Democrats' emails and files during the time he was employed there, before he was banned and arrested. In addition to cybersecurity breaches in our Congress, prosecutors are investigating a possible theft of equipment and ghost employees. Wow! Just dot.